Yo, what's up, everybody? Yes, as me on your bottom left-hand corner of your screen, people always ask, you know, why I don't show myself on camera and stuff. It's because of the angle I have cameras and stuff, and this is coming straight off my laptop. So today, we're going to sit there and talk about what I like to call the eBay hot pack scandal or scam that a lot of people are getting into. Now, anybody that's new in the hobby, this is something you probably want to pay attention to because you'll see this stuff all over. And it's just not a good idea to even mess with it. Stop giving these guys your money and just go after hobby boxes. But without further ado, let me click a few things off and we will move into this. All right, let's see how. I gotta see which button's which here. Boom, there we go. I'm gonna move this down a little bit on everybody. You guys don't need a current date and time on this at all. All right, so when I'm talking about these hot packs, they're basically people out there on eBay, and they're all over. I'm just using eBay as a prime example today of uh, these hot packs. I mean, you could scroll through and just type in eBay hot pack or hot pack on eBay, and this is what comes up: all these packs. And you start looking, man, ten dollars, and you're they're gonna say. Oh, you're guaranteed uh, autographed or relic and all this stuff. And people are like, oh, cool, man. How they do that? Well, to be honest, I'm going to show you guys some solds. So you guys can see, stuff could go for some high-end money here for hot packs. People are making a ton off of this stuff. But my best thing to tell you is stay far, far, far away from it all. I'm going to close that one out. We're going to move into it. So what it is is people are going out there, and you'll mostly catch this with retail, okay? A lot of people won't do this with hobby because they can't get hobby, and it doesn't make sense for the profit they're going to make off of it. So you know how you go to Walmart or Target, and all your stuff is just empty? It's because these guys are coming in taking everything off. And I'm not saying all these sellers are doing this, but this is the majority of how this stuff goes. So what will happen is they go in there and they buy all the retail product up and you and your kids and grandkids can't get any. And they're either what I call using a fingernail test, a weight scale, or they're taking them home and opening them and resealing them. Some pe now, there's one of three ways. You just can't sit there and tell that, oh, this is a hot pack. Trust me. You're going to know by, you know, basically either sight or by filling it or with the weight that it's a hot pack. So what I'm talking about is, and this has been caught a bunch of times into uh, Walmart, these guys have these little pocket scales like this here. Uh, I'm not too sure how far this goes up, but it'll go into the, like the grams and stuff, and they'll say, oh, this pack is real heavy. This was really popular about a year ago when their stuff used to sit in shelves. Now they just grab it all. And they'll resell the packs that they know don't have the hits in it, and they'll get their money there, and then they'll up the prices on the ones they know have hits in it. So this scale here, people used to just weigh the packs, and the more they weighed or off, they'd find out what the average pack would be, and then anything that had a variation to it, they were buying them. It, it was a real sad thing. They were getting busted out. Um, people had uh, the security at Walmart managers come in, and nothing was ever done about it. It's just really sad. It still goes on today, but a different caliber. So don't get me wrong on to it at all. It still goes on. Well, let's go back into this stuff here. So when you look at this, the first one, I just pulled these up. Like I said, they're mostly all going to be retail packs because your high packs are going to be a little more expensive and they're a little bit harder to usually sometimes get away, but uh, they, they still do it. But they're mostly concerned on getting the retail stuff. So what you want to always do, let me see if this blows up on my screen here too. I'm just looking. I don't think that's the proper bottom to the pack. I could be wrong. I don't remember 2020 Donruss having silver on the bottom. But when you buy, if you get something like this and you want to take your chances on it, you know, um, look for key signs. The double crimping on the bottoms. Does this pack look like one that you purchased before? Because you can look anywhere on these. And you can tell when stuff's been resealed, it'll pull easier. Sometimes it pulls harder apart because they just got really smart with and creative with what they do. But if you look, this person here says you're guaranteed an auto purple rated rookie into it. 
hundred percent feedback, almost nine thousand remarks left. So I mean, yeah, at least you know he's not probably resilient or just not been caught. And you need to look at his stuff down here. Basically, even before you think of a refund, you gotta have everything on a video to send him to show him for proof. That's because he knows it's a scam, it's a scandal, whatever you want to call it, it's been going on forever. And seriously, if you're watching this video and you bought this stuff before, I'd like to know if you ever pulled anything good out of it, because everything I've seen are just common relics. I've even seen cards get put back into circulation in these packs. So what I'm saying is somebody bought like an upper deck pack that was guaranteed like a cut auto or something into it. And no kidding, they took whatever was in that pack and they restuffed it. And it was hard to open. And that card was serial numbered and somebody found it was already sold a few times before that. So there's a lot of things you can do to see if you're going to you know, get caught on this stuff. But this is another one I just seen. This is the Bowman Mega Boxes. Stuff sometimes just don't look right to me, but I could be wrong. I'd open up a lot of retail. But if you look here at the top right, you see how that's all crimpled up? Normally it's not like that. So what they're doing is basically folding the pack down and getting their finger in there and stuff to feel what each card feels like going down by thickness. And I've seen this done in other videos. Somebody showed it. It was a while back on YouTube. But it's just a shame this stuff happens. To me, this is the biggest scam or scandal out there are these hot packs. And many people have been around doing this, you know, in the card business for years, especially either in breaks or R breakers or, you know, whatever it may be, retail sellers. They know about this. Trust me. Everybody knows about it. So real quick, we'll keep going down here. Look at the bottom of this pack and how it, it sits. So I'm going to check my mouse. Well, I can't. So if you look, see where my mouse is right here? I know it's kind of hard to see. See how that's angled? I'm going to blow it up. That does not look right at all to me. It looks like it's been resealed. It really does. I could be 100% wrong, too. Let me know what you guys think. I'm not an expert on this stuff by no means, but I can start picking small stuff out. And I just know I'm going to alleviate myself from even going into something like this to put money in their pockets. Because look at this. $21 for this pack. $21! That's on a bid already. 99.1% feedback, so you have some negatives in there. Uh, this is where really the stuff we can start getting real tricky, this older stuff. 2009 Upper Deck. Football. You can get a Peyton Manning or a Stafford, Tom Brady. I, I mean, it's an auto jersey patch hot pack. I mean, come on now. I guarantee you're probably going to pull something out of here, and if it was anything good already, he got rid of it. You can just look at the crimping in the bottom of this, unless that's just his light there below per pack. They just don't look right. Look at the top, how wrinkled it is. If he did, he thumbed that. He thumbed through it trying to figure out what was in it and figured, oh, it's just a regular relic. Those guys are so clever in doing this stuff. I'm just going to say stay away from anything that's a hot pack. I'm not. I'm going to just save mystery packs for something totally different in a video um, because there's some people that do a repack very, very good. But there's another thing when you start hitting mystery packs and all this other stuff. And I'll go into that in another video completely. But what I want to try to do is help everybody out there that's new into collecting the hobby. Or maybe it's your kid that's new into the hobby. And you're just trying to get him stuff that's going to bring a smile on his face. And he opens it. And it's like nothing in there. And you just spend all this money on the hopes and dreams of something else. Don't do it. Save your money. Go buy a hobby box uh, that's still sealed and all that stuff up. You'll have a lot better chance at it. It's more fun. If you want to buy older stuff, then save up for it. It's the best thing I could tell you to do. Seriously, it's the best thing I can tell you guys to do out there. Um, I, I know people have probably bought these before. I did a long time ago, and I'm talking probably about a decade ago maybe. And it was just horrible. Horrible. Horrible experience. They were such generic autos in them all. And I didn't then just buy one or two. I bought, I think it was either 15 or 20 of them. Because I wanted to see how well it would go overall. And it was horrible. It was probably the worst. I forget what I spent on it, like 300 bucks probably back then or something like that. It, it, it was just the dumbest thing I did. There was nothing good into it. And when you expect that many hot packs, you'd think you'd at least get a mediocre or something good out of it. There was nothing, everybody, nothing. Um, 
Nowadays, everybody's looking to flip stuff for a quick buck and they're trying to get over in a system by guessing what's in that stuff. I have even seen where I've, well, I've seen people post that their hobby shop will weigh NT boxes. And it's, I think it's just baseball, if I recall right. And if that box is super heavy because it has one of them big, like, triple decade books into it, they'll sell it for more because it weighs more. That That's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. You open that case up, put it on your... Don't let the customers touch it. Tell them you want box one, two, three, or four. And they say, let me see them. Nah, -uh. you don't touch them. Everybody's the same odds on to it. it it's just a shame our hobbies are really turned into this stuff. Uh, there, there's a lot of good people out there, don't get me wrong, but by every good person, I'm going to say there's probably five bad people out there, if not more. Because every day I see Facebook scams, Instagram scams, Twitter scams. It, it's horrible. You don't know who you can trust anymore out there. And you really have to try to find that real tight community where everybody's pretty much good and there's not a whole lot of drama going on in there. I mean, heck, we had a guy that messed a Raz up for an $18,000 car. It wasn't even valued at 18000 I don't think. That, that was a huge thing, of, I think, over Christmas time, if I remember right. But back to the hot packs. Stay away from them. I'm not a fan of them. If you want to do them, that, that's on to you. I, I'm giving everybody a fair warning. It's a horrible idea. These guys have searched them. They've thumbed through them. That's how they know what's in them. They've weighed them, whatever it may be out there. Uh, just save your money up, buy the card you want, or buy a hobby box. Or, you know, if you have a reputable breaker, go break with them or something. It'll be more fun than your disappointment to open one of these up. Again, thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be hitting all kinds of topics up here this year. Lots and lots and lots. And as I start finding bad um, videos out there of breaks and stuff, I'm going to post them. Uh, regardless of whoever it is out there that I see, you know, and I think it looks sketchy or it's something you could say, it could be a lesson learned, I'm going to give it to you guys, straight up. New year, new leaf, like I said, onto this stuff. It's just getting way out of control. And I get a few emails a week or messages or phone calls about stuff like this. And instead of me just explaining it to one person, I'd rather put the information out there to everybody, uh, at least from my knowledge. And like I said, feel free to hit all the comments you guys want up in this. I'll read them. I'll respond. Um, if you've done well in these, if it's just you had a one-time deal and did well, did you? why didn't you go back for more, you know, later type deal? I'm really interested in these stories to hear. I've never heard a good story. Never, ever, ever. I'm sorry. But other than that, Thank you, everybody. I think we're hitting a little over 12, almost 13 minutes now, so I'm going to cut this for the video. Again, appreciate your support. I'll come back this week. We're going to hit mystery packs and mystery boxes up. We're going to talk about group break subs, buying off of social media, all that stuff all together, but I'm going to break it down into smaller videos so they're easy to reference on the channel and everything. All right, everybody. Have a great week. I will see you later.